Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I am going to explain you CSMA CD protocol. CSMA that we have already studied in my last video. With CSMA, I have explained you four varieties. First one was one persistent CSMA. Second was non-persistent CSMA. Third was p-persistent CSMA. And fourth CSMA protocol that was zero persistent CSMA. So that we have already studied. Here in this video, extension of CSMA that I'm that I'll be explaining here. CSMA CD. CD stands for collision detection. CSMA is what? Carrier sense multiple axis. Right. But along with that, here we are dealing with to identify collision detection. So our agenda is to understand how collision detection is happening. For CSMA CD, first I'll explain you basics, then I'll explain you how many methods are there for collision detection, then I'll explain you how many parameters are there with CSMA CD, and at last I'll explain you how working is there along with flowchart. At first look, you might be thinking like this flowchart is very big, but let me tell you, once you see this video, you can say like this is very easy flowchart. So let us try to understand first how many basics are there with CSMA CD protocol. So, principle of CSMA that is sense before transmit. In CSMA what we do? We sense the channel and as if channel is free then only host is allowed to transmit the data. Means sense before transmit. Right. CSMA CD that usually used in wired medium. Let me tell you practically in computer network CSMA CD is widely used, but that is widely used in wired medium. So practically you will be observing this protocol CSMA CD that is used in wired medium only. In wired also we use it with optical cable as well as we use it with ethernet cable, right. Here in CSMA CD we will be detecting collision and you will be observing you don't need to have acknowledgement here. So first of all, you need to understand what is the purpose of acknowledgement. See, acknowledgement is used to identify whether frame is received by receiver or not. Here in CSMA CD, what we do is we identify collision detection. So if you identify collision detection, then you can directly say because of collision, frame is corrupted. And if you identify well in advance based on collision detection like frame is corrupted then why don't you why do you have a need of acknowledgement acknowledgement is required for what for a confirmation in which you will be identifying whether frame is received or not but if you identify the collision then directly you just need to have retransmission why do you need to have acknowledgement in that case so here there will be no acknowledgement with this protocol and See, in CSMA CD, if collision is detected, then transmission of frame is aborted in the middle of transmission and again there will be retransmission, right. So how retransmission happens, how frame abort situation will happen, everything that we will be discussing with practical case studies. Let us see first, how many methods of collision detection is there in CSMA CD. So before I explain you methods, let me tell you first how collision is happening. The reason is first of all you need to understand how collision is happening. Once you understand that you can detect how collision is happening. So first of all you need to understand how collision is happening. So here for example if I am having two hosts and that is connected by a medium that is having distance D and see this horizontal axis that belongs to distance and this vertical axis that belongs to time. Right. Now here you see if I say this host is initiating transmission at this instant. This host is initiating transmission at this instant, right. So at this instant, this host will be placing frame on medium bit by bit and how much time that this host needs to have for transmission of frame? It needs to have TT time. TT time means what? Transmission time. Means that is a time required for host to place frame on the medium. So, after TT time, this frame will be available on the medium and after TT time, 
you can say as time progresses in this direction, this frame that will go further in this medium like this, you see. So, as time progresses, this frame is going towards this host over here. Now, what happens as if this host is initiating transmit and transmission at this instant? So, at this instant, this host will be placing few bits of frame. And as this frame is reaching over here, both of this frame, the frame forwarded by this host, and frame forwarded by this host that is getting collide over here. So, once there is a collision, what will happen? Both of this frame will get corrupted. Both of this frame will get corrupted. So, what will happen? You see, as if this corrupted frame that comes back over here, then what will happen? As if this frame comes back over here, then this host will be receiving corrupted frame. So, what is the purpose of receiving corrupted frame over here? We should not have reception of corrupted frame. The reason is if you receive corrupted frame, it is of no use. So, what we need to do? We need to detect collision. So, here collision is happening because of propagation time. You see, collision is happening because of propagation time. If you nullify this propagation time, if you nullify this propagation time, then there will be very few chances of collision. You cannot, practically we cannot nullify propagation time, right? Always there will be propagation delay. So, propagation delay cannot be zero. But for small lens, for small network, propagation delay will be negligible. But practically it exists. And as if collision is happening, then there will be corruption. So we want to avoid this collision. So for that, there are three methods by which we can have a detection of collision. Right. So how to detect that? You see, first is compare sent and received data. So for example, if you talk about this host is sending one frame. And as if this host is comparing forwarded and received frame, then based on difference that host can identify whether collision was there or not. Like for example, if you forward one frame and again if you receive that same frame and if you compare both of that frame and if any difference is there, then you can say because of difference there is a collision, right? So that is one way. But practically I can tell you like, this method is not used in general, right? The reason is it is it is taking a bit more time. Here, second is high signal amplitude. Let me show you practically how high signal amplitude can identify collision detection. Like as if I talk about one host, let us say host 1 and host 2, both are sending frame. But let us try to understand that by one bit only. Like you see, one bit is there like this. Here, logic 1 is having 1 voltage and logic 0 is having 0 voltage. Now, host 2 is forwarding another bit like it is happening like this, you see. Now, this is also having 1 voltage over here and 0 voltage over here. So, what will happen here? Here, as if both of these bits are getting collide on the medium, then resultant voltage will be sum of both. So, that summation will be, that resultant will be, you see, from here, it will be having one voltage, but after this instant, both of this will be added over here. And then, you see, at this instant, again, it will reduce. And then at this instant, it will be having zero voltage from here, right? So, here, there will be one voltage. Here, there will be one voltage. But here, if you observe, if you observe here, here, then you will be observing that is greater than 1 voltage. So, as this is greater than 1 voltage, you can say high signal amplitude is there and that high signal amplitude indicates what? There was collision of two frames, right? So, that is how second method is there. Now, in third method, what we do is we receive the signal while transmitting and this is widely used method. Here what we do? We receive the signal while we transmit the signal. In that there are some conditions that you need to understand. Like obviously if you receive the signal and if you while you are transmitting and while you are transmitting at that time if you receive some signal at that time you can say okay there is a collision. That is very simple. 
in terms of understanding like when you transmit the signal at the time if you receive the signal of some other frame then you can say there is a collision that is how it is easy but with that there are some conditions that you need to understand for example here you see we are sending one frame right but if you are sending this frame right now from here onwards you are not sending anything from here onwards you are not sending anything right so over here even if you receive the signal even if you receive the signal how do you get to know like whether collision is there or not so for that what is the condition you see for that condition is transmission time period that is tt and this transmission time period that should be greater than this propagation round trip time like you see here you have been sending frame at the time you have been receiving the signal but collision time period that is how much tp plus tp tp plus tp that is what collision time period and transmission time period that is tt so with this method this transmission time period that should be greater than tp plus tp that is 2 tt then only this method that is applicable right and this is widely used method receiving the signal while transmitting right but in that condition should be what tt that should be greater than collision time period that is tp plus tp then only this method is applicable right so here if you talk about parameters of csma cd then you see usually i have told you we use this receiving signal while still transmitting so in that tt should be greater than or equal to 2 tp tt is what tt is transmission time period that is length of the frame divided by bandwidth tp is what propagation time period that is distance divided by velocity of signal just substitute that and based on that you can have length of the frame that should be greater than or equal to twice of db by v See, this is how this formula is coming and this formula is very very essential for solving questions if you have some issues in terms of remembering these values then you can directly say tt is greater than or equal to 2 tp but you should know what is tt that is length of the frame divided by bandwidth and tp is distance by velocity and i think i have solved more than 15 examples based on this so based on that we can easily solve it i don't think like you will have to remember this formulas right and this efficiency of csma cd that is very very essential that is 1 divided by 1 plus 6.44 a where where this a is tp by tt again and again you will have to place this right but what i prefer is i just uh, remember that as per this only where a is tp by tp if i need to have a calculation of tp and tt then i can cal calculate it separately and then substitute the values right so this is how parameters are there this derivation that is even easy if you request me over here by writing comment in this video i'll make video on this for derivation but uh, i don't think like for solving question we need to have derivation of this right you just need to understand how protocol is there based on that there can be definite equations so now i'm going to explain you how csma cd functions based on this flowchart and i'm coming in between this so i just need to go away right so let us try to understand how that entire process is happening so for that let me draw one host over here so we are having one host host means one computer is there and let us say this host is interested for communication and here there is a channel on this channel this host is interested to place data means frame so first of all host will be assembling a frame and then host will be attempting first time so attempt is equals to one when host is attempting to send the frame on this channel now in first attempt host will be doing what host will be sensing the channel so it will be identifying whether other stations are transmitting or not so on this channel it will be sensing first whether other stations are transmitting or not if somebody is transmitting over here then host will not place frame over here it will wait but as if this channel is free means if no station is transmitting over here then it will start to place frame over here on this channel 
right so it will transmit first bit of frame on this channel and after first bit it will identify whether collision is there or not the reason is if host is transmitting data and as as if while it is transmitting if collision is happening then then you will have to abort the transmission right so it will be checking for collision if no collision is there then it will be checking for whether transmission is finished or not otherwise it will be transmitting next bit right so here what it does is it will be identifying collision if no collision is happening then you can say transmission is successful but as if collision is happening with this frame transmission then here we will be checking for how many attempts that have been ha that have happened here i am talking about first attempt but if that attempts are repeating again and again then that attempt will increase let us say attempt is lower than maximum limit so what will happen it will be loading weight counter and that weight counter is loaded by 16 bit random variable and here we will be waiting for our time slot here we will be waiting for our time slot till weight is equals to 0 if weight is not equals to 0 then we will have to wait for one time slot right and as if weight is equals to 0 then our attempt will be incremented by 1 and again same process that we will be repeating as if we exceeds to maximum limit then you can say there is no transmission possible right so simply what this host is doing is this host is first sensing the channel once it sends the channel what it does is it will be identifying whether this channel is free or not if it is free then it will start to place the frame and while it is placing the frame on the channel it is identifying whether collision is there or not if collision is there then it will be attempting next time but for that it will have to wait for some time and if that attempts are increasing again and again so after maximum attempt it can say no transmission is possible right so that is how things are happening so i think now it is clear to you like how exactly entire process is happening till if anything that you like to share it with me please note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video